Hello and welcome to the TOL Playoff Preview. I've got my guest host here, Michael Jenkinson. Welcome to the show, everybody. All right. So let's uh, let's jump right into this. So the first matchup that we have is going to be the Chicago Robbers and the Seattle Loose Vs. This is a 10 and 6 Seattle Loose V team that missed out on uh, the division and a chance at a number one seed and ended up in the wild card round playing against the robbers the robbers when we did our mid-season review they were two and six they were the second worst team in the conference and since then they have gone seven and one and now they are uh, finishing the season at nine and seven and they're one of the hottest teams in the league what do you think about that jenkinson they completely crept up on me i you know obviously i follow this very closely and shame on me, there's sometimes there's some teams where I just kind of write them off in the back of my mind, and they were one of them. Um, I don't even think we mentioned them at the midseason point. I don't and believe we did. All of a sudden, with like a week or two left, Bobby's telling me that that they are still in it, and I was shocked. Like, they just completely crept up on me. But I did have a chance to watch them, because um, I didn't watch them for a while, because I thought they were out of it. And they impressed me when I watched them at the end of the season. They looked pretty good. I wouldn't want to play these guys. Yeah, their only loss in that stretch was to the Loaf Cross Archers, and that's a, that's an 11 and 5 playoff team. So that's yeah. it's pretty impressive. Uh, but if you, if you take a look at who they're playing, they're playing against uh, a division rival here, the Seattle Loose Vs, and they've actually played them twice in week four and week eight. And those games did not go the robbers' way. The week four, they lost 34 24, and in week eight, they lost 37 to 30. So are we going to see another? close game here or or do we think uh, that Seattle is just going to end the Cinderella ride for the Chicago Robbers? You know, it's a classic uh, momentum versus matchup battle here, right? I mean, the the loose V's as good as they were, well, you know, I thought, I thought the end of the season was really exciting with that three. It was basically a three team race um, for that first seed and second seed. Um, So they were right in that mix, but they weren't playing their best right at the end of the season. Whereas, the robbers have a lot of momentum, but um, I think in general, matchup does triumph over momentum. So I still think the loose fees are going to pull this one off. But, you know, when the team's as hot as the robbers are, I, I'm not going to not going to bet against them. Absolutely. Now, if you take a look at the offense, offensive rankings, the Chicago robbers were. 18th and the loose fees were 19th. Both of these teams are heavy pass and they were only separated by 10 yards of total offense uh, for the season. But the defense, what do we have here? We have the loose fees were the sixth ranked defense and the Chicago Robbers were the eighth ranked defense. So again, very close in their other rankings here when it comes to offense and defense. So it's a very even matchup. So we could very well see a, a, a close game here. Yeah, I think that one's going to be one of the best games of the first round. Absolutely. Now, if we take a look at, oh, man, that was loud. Sorry, did you hear that uh, on your side? No. Okay, good. (laughs) All right, so what I want to take a look at real quick, and I wonder if I can share the screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at. So give me a second here, Jenkinson. Okay. I mean, I have the playoff brackets up in front of me, so. All right. All right, there we go. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. So when we do the recording, we're going to test that too out in a, in a little bit. All right, I'm going to take a look Let's at the. Uh, yep. So I'm taking a look at the offensive line here uh, for Chicago Robbers, and they all look like they're in pretty good condition. And when you compare yeah. that to the Seattle Loose Fees, let's take a look at their defensive line. Brandon Hart lacks. Stud. Yep. But the other two are in bad. Right, and I don't believe the robbers paid their defensive line, which it doesn't look it's going to matter too much because the loose V's offensive line is pretty impressive. Well, they did pay the the one guy there, so it, I, I'd yeah. give the defensive line advantage uh, to the Seattle loose V's. So it'll be an interesting. Yeah, I mean, just just Brendan Hart lacks alone. He's so good. All right, uh, so let's let's make some predictions for this first round game here. I'm going to say 
just because at least these have won at both matchups. I think they're going to win again. I, I think they're going to win 37. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as close this time. I think it's going to be 37 20. I, I think uh, the loose fees are just a better matchup uh, for this for this team. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think the Cinderella story comes to a close. It's look, just making the playoffs is a big deal. So uh, I think the robbers should be very happy with it. But I'm going to go a little lower scoring than you, but similar type result 28 17 loose fees. All right. Let's uh, let's move over to the next matchup. That's going to be the Loaf Cross Archers, eleven and five versus the overrated Garbage, ten and six. Now uh, this seems like it would be a pretty good matchup, but if you take a look at Week 16, these two teams played, and it was a bit of a mismatch. Uh, the heavy rush attack for the Archers destroyed the overrated Garbage, sixty to fourteen. Uh, Pam Poovey had two hundred and seventy-five rushing yards. Now, do we see something like this happening again, or was this an outlier? I was very surprised. I wouldn't think that anybody would put up that many points against that garbage defense. Um, so I'm going to go and actually say it was an outlier, even though it was only two weeks ago. I, I mean, you just look at some of these other teams, and uh, nobody else was putting those kind of numbers up against the garbage. The... Um, you know, the strength of the garbage defense, similar to a team we'll be getting to a little later, is those corners. Um, so you autom- normally you think, oh, corners, that they're only good against the pass. But in Tecmo, those corners can really help a lot against the run, too. Um, yes, they they're definitely I, I, have I, the speed. But uh, if you take a look at this, uh, these corners, look at the hitting power. 31 yeah, hitting power for our PC gaming. Batman has got 38, and that's an excellent condition. I think that's where the run game is going to really toss his his uh, his uh, corners and defensive backs. So yeah, you got to hope for a lot of dive tackles if you're uh, the garbage. Yep. So I, I think if if they can get the archers into third and long, force them into passing situations. If they can get those RNG blitzes uh, first and second down, that really plays uh, to their strength of their defense. However, it's going to be hard to, uh, to do that. But with a running team, you know, they're looking for more of a sustained drive. So even if they, you know, run over your first play, run over your second play, and then you get one called play, you know, you can, you can put yourself back in a good position to, uh, to make that stop. Um, so I'm not saying that the archers aren't going to score some points. They definitely will, but, I, I think it's going to be half of what they've got in that game two weeks ago. I, 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 again, not saying that it's a great matchup for the garbage, but I don't think anybody can routinely put up 50, 60 points against them. I yeah. think you're going to see that number come way down. Yeah, I, I believe this is going to be a closer game, probably around 30 to 24, but I still think it's going to be an archer's win. Um, I just think that they're just a matchup problem for the overrated garbage. Yeah, I, I think the garbage offense, um, you know, has flaws too. So, um, yeah, if you're asking for a score, I'll say 24 14 uh, archers. Yeah, saying that their offense has flaws is an understatement. They were the worst <laughs> defense in the league at 3,500 yards. Uh, the second lowest was 3,900. So, yeah, they could have played a 17th game and still would have been in the last place. <laughs> All right. Well, they're so, in the playoffs, so let's. I'm trying to be nice to everybody in the playoffs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if they were playing any other team, any heavy pass team, uh, because that's where their real strength is, is pass rush. Right. Yeah, they would yeah. do well. But uh, playing against a heavy rush team is just not a good matchup for that team. All right, so we'll, we'll move over to the. Uh, uh, let's see. I don't think this is an important one. Uh, who that's versus who's that? F- uh, Philly. Philly. The yeah. Finnist? The Finnist, yeah. Like a fish team? Yeah. <laughs> it's a new Dolphins team, uh, the Finns. <laughs> All right. So uh, tell me what you think about this one. Well, as I may have mentioned, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this at any point to you, but I did actually beat them twice in the regular season. You did? Um, in week four and week eight, maybe? 45 to 14 <laughs> and 20 to 14? So, right. Well, you, but you just mentioned the point that I was going to bring back up is that I didn't, 
blow them out either of those games. It's not as uh, you know, just because well, I won them both four. doesn't mean that it's like a dominant matchup for me. Well, true. Now, here's the problem with this this game for the Houdets. They come into this game without both of their uh, their running backs. Alvin Kamara and Deuce McAllister are both injured. Now, chances are they might get one of those running backs back, but if they don't, this could be a very, very long game for them. They are a heavy pass, but still, they do rely somewhat on that running game as well. Yeah, they a lot of those passes are geared to get the ball to those backs, and those backs are paid. It was an interesting build, actually, as much as I uh, didn't like them winning the division in my division. Uh, I did like their build, because you think if you're going to pay your running back, you're going to go heavy rush, but there's backs were still making a lot of plays during the regular season. Yep. Now let me uh, ask you this. What, what do you think about your offense uh, going into the playoffs? I know you've made some lineup changes. What do you think yeah, your team's going to be able to do here in the playoffs? Yeah, definitely a disappointing season overall for my offense. I, um, you know, I've Bryce Harper was my best played player I, on offense and I, and he was a backup. So I thought I was being clever trying to sneak him into the playoffs. So me and a lot of people, you know, a lot of it is going to come down to who and when people come back from injuries. I do have an injured player. So if I can get Harper on the field, that'll make a big difference for me. Um, outside of that, though, my offense is going to tend to struggle. I mean, Will Chamberlain had a pretty good year at tight end. Ben Franklin had a pretty good year at wide receiver one. But um, I'm not blowing anybody out. So, uh, you know, I, I need to control the game with my defensive front and uh, just get points when I can get them. Yeah. And I went ahead and in my bracket challenge, I picked you to win this game. Um, I mean, you, you've beaten him twice already. He's coming into this game possibly without his uh, two my best running backs. I, I just, it's just one, one of those things where you're just a matchup problem for the other team. And I, and I believe you're going to win a close one here. I think it's going to be around, 30 24 similar to that to what i predicted for the archers in the garbage game yeah i'm gonna predict myself too um but you can see how confident i am with the tone of my voice uh, <laughs> if i'm gonna win i Losing think it's gonna confidence. have to be a low scoring game you know like uh because like you said like his his injured backs and my defensive front being uh two of the biggest factors so you know i'm gonna say i'm gonna win but it's gonna be uh, 17-10. All right. Now we move on to the matchup of champions. We have our season four champion, Mike Petrosic versus Frank Balog, the season two and season three champ, squaring off in the first round of the playoffs. And these two split in the regular season. This actually might be the best game of the, uh, of the divisional, or the, excuse me, the wild card round. In week 12, Frank, with a backup quarterback, beat the one-hit wonders 20-19. to 19. Now, there was some controversy in that game. I believe uh, there was an opportunity to go for a field goal, and they decided to go for it. That's good old technologic for you. But then in week 17, in the rematch, Mike was able to win 30-21. to 21. And I believe you did the uh, commentary for that game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the, the memes actually started off red hot in that game. And uh, it looks like they might run the wonders out of the building and maybe out of the playoffs. And then for the final three quarters, it was all wonders. Well, so that's just a microcosm of the Friends meme season. They started off like <laughs> 7 and 0 and then just. I was going to say that. Down the stretch. Yeah, it's, like a, <laughs> it's like there's only enough energy, apparently, for Friends memes and Chicago robbers, and they can't share it. So only one of them can be good at any given time, I think. <laughs> That's pretty uh, pretty good comparison. Now, if you take a look at the defensive rankings for these two teams, they're number two uh, overall and number four overall. So it's going to be a, a good defensive matchup. But I just I believe the offense for the one hand wonders is going to be just a little too much for uh, the friends memes uh, in this game. I do too. Yeah, sorry. We if people listening, if you want us. We're not really uh, getting into fierce debates here. We're mostly agreeing, but I'm not going <laughs> to refuse to be like one of those cheesy ass Fox or ESPN shows where they make the people disagree just to, for the sake of argument. Um, but yeah, I, I do think this one's going to be the wonders. Um, and when you look at these, I know the record's not there for the wonders, but if you, when you look at these offensive and defensive rankings, 
or number wonder, four actually. Both. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly right. You know, so they're one of the few teams, maybe the only team that's top five in both. Maybe the uh, Oaks are too, but um, you know, I think we're sleeping on this team a little bit because they had a little bit of run of bad luck in the middle of the season. A lot of that. Yeah, they're the only one. A lot um, of that's probably so, the division they were in as well. Uh, yeah, and they were playing in a super tough division. So, uh, I mean, I think they are one of the absolute favorites to win the whole thing. Um, you know, this this right side of the bracket, the uh, Raj side of the bracket, um, you know, as much as I love to admit it, is clearly more loaded. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for such, I mean, he has to go through – Friends memes, then the titles, then the Oaks. Like, the, has there ever been a team that's had to go through a tougher stretch to, to, to win a championship? I don't know, but I believe so. No, uh, he actually did so, beat the famous titles in week two, I believe it was 28 27 in a, in a classic game. That was a, a really uh, good one. That was, I do remember, I've forgotten, but I remember now that you mentioned it. I am, um, if they weren't, if their playoff path wasn't so difficult i might actually be picking them to win the whole thing because um they're just they're just one of the top teams i really believe that and, and again i think those rankings reflect that yeah throw them in an, at the other conference and I, I think this is easily a, a 13 win team uh but then again you know mike likes to pick his own division <laughs> i hope Which, he does uh, the same thing next year believe me uh, you know, think of after, me as bad. I don't want to be in your division. Pick all those good teams and, and get away from me. After uh, talking to him, I, I think he might go with a different uh, strategy next season yeah, if, he's, if he's given the opportunity. But uh, yeah, he's got to win. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, that uh, concludes our wild card round playoff preview. Uh, you want to add anything on, on to, to that? I, no, I just I think it's a, a really interesting round. I think we got most of the teams right. Uh, I feel you know some of those top teams in that Raj conference are probably better than some of us bottom dwellers. You know, in the Bob, I think uh, you know the Drunkards and uh, the Ninja Turtles, and uh, there's one more I'm forgetting. But they they probably, if you had to actually break this up into the twelve best teams, probably deserve to be here. But you know that's the way it works sometimes. All right. Well, thank you everybody for for listening. Uh, Jenkinson, thanks for uh, for joining me this morning. Anytime.